Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another 11 inch tablet to take a look at today. This one from Lenovo. This is a more premium offering, but is still very reasonably priced. And in addition to getting the tablet here, mine came as a kit that included a pen along with a keyboard and trackpad case. And this tablet actually has a special desktop mode that lets this thing work more like a laptop, although it is not a Chromebook, it's running Android. And we're gonna dive into all the nuances of this tablet here in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Lenovo, and we will be doing a giveaway on this. So definitely sign up for my email list, which you'll see in the video description to get more information. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this tablet is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $299 for the kit that includes the tablet, the keyboard, and the pen. You can buy the tablet standalone for about $229. And I'm sure you'll see this on sale from time to time as well, especially now as we're getting into the later season of its life cycle. Now there are two versions of this tablet. This is the regular P11 second generation. There is also a pro version that has greater performance and more premium features, but we're looking at the base model today, not the pro. Now inside this has a MediaTek Helio G99 processor. And what you'll see out of this is that the performance on this one is almost identical to what we saw out of two low cost tablets from Walmart and Amazon recently. So this is not gonna get you any more on the performance side versus those, but its premium price does bring some premium features that we'll detail here in the video. This has four gigabytes of RAM, which is a little on the low side these days for a tablet in my opinion, and it has 128 gigabytes of storage, although you can add an SD card to it to expand that out. Now, one of the more premium features of this tablet is its display. Like the cheaper ones out there, it is 11 and a half inches, running at 2000 by 1200 for its resolution. But this one has the ability to go up to 120 hertz for its refresh rate. So it's going to feel a little smoother than those lower cost options will, which are limited to 60 hertz only. It has 400 nits of brightness and supports 100% of the DCI P3 color scale. So you'll get good accuracy for photo editing and that sort of thing. Now on its own, it weighs just over one pound, 1.14 pounds to be exact, or 520 grams. When you tack on the cases here, you're looking at about 2.35 pounds or 1.06 kilograms. There's not much to it like most tablets these days. It does have a nice metal case, although this portion here feels like plastic to accommodate the antennas. There are stereo speakers on it that sound pretty decent. It's got Dolby Atmos sound. So the sound quality out of this one is a little better than some of the cheaper tablets I've looked at recently. On the bottom, you have Pogo plugs for attaching its keyboard. And on the back here, or the bottom, I guess, uh, you've got a USB type C port and a headphone jack. The USB-C port here does support data devices, but it is USB 2.0 only, so you're not gonna get high-speed data transfers out of the port. Additionally, this does not support external displays through its USB-C port, although you can cast it using a Chromecast device on a display. And if you were curious where that SD card slot is, it's right here on the top. There are some versions of this product that also support mobile data, and there you'll have the ability to put a SIM card in in addition to the SD card. Now this lacks any kind of fingerprint reader, but as you'll see here, it does have facial recognition to let you in. So you don't have to type in your pin code every time, but you do need to set up your face in order to unlock it. Now this has two cameras on board. You have a front facing camera here in the middle that actually looks pretty decent. It shoots 1080p video, as you can see. So this should work well for Zoom calls and that sort of thing. One thing that you will note, and I'll pull up my video again here, is that it does put a watermark by default on the recording, but you can take that off. So you may wanna do that before you start sharing your videos with your friends. This camera will shoot, as I mentioned, 1080p video, and it also does eight megapixel stills. The rear camera is a 13 megapixel camera. It will also do 1080p video. 
Nothing spectacular from a video standpoint. There's no stabilization as you can see here. The video doesn't look all that great. The photos are passable, I suppose, for a tablet, but nothing great from a photography standpoint. You're gonna do much better with a phone, I think, for that. Now this is running Android 12. By comparison, the on tablet was running Android 13 when we looked at it a few weeks ago. Lenovo does say on their product page that this is upgradable to Android 14. So I'm guessing at some point in the near future, it will get a major update to bring it a little bit higher on its Android release level there. But the performance here is pretty good. We've got the Chrome browser open now. It does have a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board, and I found all of the basic tasks that you might do on the tablet to run quite nicely here and very responsively. So all in, a very nice browsing experience. And because you have such a wide display here, things like split screen work pretty nicely too. So if we go out here and maybe put uh, the browser on the left-hand side and YouTube here on the right-hand side, as you can see here, you can run two things simultaneously. And there's some other modes that we'll look at in a few minutes that give you some multi-window options too. So from a basic performance standpoint, it is fine. It may feel a little sluggish at the get-go because it will be installing some updates, but overall not bad for the price point and on par with some of the other 11-inch tablets that you'll find out there. And I found video streaming to work quite nicely on here. The display looks really nice. And of course, you've got the Atmos sound. Uh, Netflix here runs great, as you can see. I can very quickly jump into a video and navigate everything, and it's all very, very responsive and looks nice on screen. Just remember, though, that the aspect ratio of this display is wider than most 1080p video is, so you'll see some letterboxing on the top and bottom depending on the aspect ratio of the video. But the sound is great and overall a very nice consumption device. The battery life on this should get you about eight hours of constant usage doing basic tasks. If you're gaming on it or doing other things, it will of course consume more battery life, but by and large, it's on par with other tablets in its price point. Now there's a bunch of neat little features that go above and beyond the standard Android interface on this tablet. One of them is a special reading mode. Let me pull this up for you real quick. So I'm gonna pull down the settings and I'm gonna go over to the reading mode option and turn it on. Now by default, it works in this chromatic mode where it makes the display much warmer so you get less blue light that might cause eye strain. But they also have something called mono mode and what this does is it turns the display black and white and it actually looks kind of like a Kindle screen when you have it in this mode. Not quite as good as those e-ink displays are, but you have very little blue light and very nice contrast here because everything is just black and white. So if you were looking to do some reading, uh, this might be a way to read for a long period of time without the eye strain because you can just get a very uh, nice sharp contrast between text and the background. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, my version came with a pen. It uses the Lenovo Precision Pen 2, and I found the writing to be pretty good on here, nothing to complain about. It does have a little bit of latency, as you can see, but it's not bad. The screen is a bit slippery, so I think this might be difficult for people doing more serious artwork, but for notes and doodles and that sort of thing, I think it'll do fine here. It will detect the pen when it gets about maybe a centimeter or so from the display, and then at that point, it'll ignore other input, and you can rest your hand on the display while you write. So I think it's better for note-taking than hardcore drawing, but still, it's a nice addition to the mix. Now, where do you put the pen? Well, they've got a case here that also came with my kit that is basically a backing for the tablet. And along with providing some protection, there's also a kickstand back here that will allow you to prop it up. But before we attach it, I thought this was kind of neat because not everybody buys the case with the pen. So if you want to store your pen before you put the tablet in the case, you push this little switch here and that will extend the fabric holder for the pen. So the pen has a place to live when you're not using it and it just kind of slides in here like that. So now what I want to do is get this case assembled and we'll see what we can do with the keyboard and trackpad. Okay, so we've got the case now attached and the kickstand is out so we can just use it as a stand here. 
And if you want to use the keyboard, what you do is just slide it in here and align it and it will magnetically attach and you're good to go. The keyboard is not backlit, but it does feel nice from a typing perspective. The keys are a little smaller than your standard laptop key, but they are nicely spaced so it's easy to feel your way around to make sure you're hitting the right key. It's also got a good amount of travel to it even though it is a pretty thin case and when you're done here the whole package folds up pretty nicely here. It does add some thickness to the mix but it does also give you some protection so I found it to be a nice solution here for when you need a little bit more productivity on the road. The trackpad is also very nice here very similar to other smaller trackpads that I, I've used on other platforms, including the Apple trackpad. So it will, I think, give you a very nice experience, especially if you want to use this more as a computer. And to that end, they've got a special mode here that I want to show you called productivity mode that really turns this thing more into a little PC versus just being a tablet. So if I pull down the settings screen here and select productivity mode, what this will do is shift us into a different interface that works better with a keyboard and trackpad. So now we've got kind of a desktop interface here. And if I go over to Google Chrome, what you'll notice when we load it up is that it will operate full screen here at first, but I can also make it a windowed application. And then I can pull up some other applications and have them run side by side. So this is kind of similar to how things feel on a Chromebook and actually they have a Chrome version of this machine called the Duet that does just that with the Chrome OS interface. Now not every Android app works well in this windowed environment here but most of them do and if you were looking for a more PC centric kind of feel to things when you're in this mode it's very easy to work with two applications at the same time maybe copy and paste things back and forth to different windows. So you do have a little more flexibility here. Although again, not every app is amenable to being resized here all that well, but most do. And it's kind of a fun way to approach using your Android device. But I did notice one issue and that is any app that is loaded and running in the background is going to show up as a running app here on the lower taskbar. So you can see there's a bunch of stuff here that is up and running even though I just rebooted the system from scratch. So there are some issues when you translate Android over to a desktop interface that come into play here and this is one of those particular issues. Now if I loaded up uh, the Gmail application here and then closed it, it will go away but it'll pop back up again when I reboot a second time. So just keep that in mind. But overall, it's a very nice way to get a Chrome OS-like experience, but running with just native Android. So let's take a look at its gaming performance now. We're running Roblox right now, something my kids like to run on their tablets. And it runs nicely here. It's very responsive. We've got a good frame rate, no lag. So I think from the standpoint of Roblox and Minecraft and other casual Android titles, this should do quite well. And I also tested some game emulators on the tablet, and I found that just like some of the other MediaTek-based 11-inch tablets we've looked at recently, most of the consoles from the 70s, 80s, and 90s work okay. Basically everything up to the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation. After that, it gets a little more complex. So for example, I'm running Aether SX2 here, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator, and we're only getting about 40% of the full speed of this emulator on this hardware just given the limitations of its processor. So the game is playable but we're only running here at about 25 frames per second or so, certainly well short of the 60 frames per second that this game typically runs at. So if you keep it to the basics, kind of stopping at the 90s and so far as games are concerned, it will do well on emulation but the more advanced stuff will need a more advanced processor to get a better gaming experience. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Gaming Benchmark test, we got a score of 1,201, and you'll note that is pretty much the same score we got out of the On 11-inch Pro tablet we looked at a couple of weeks ago, which costs considerably less. So if you're just after performance, you can certainly get it with that one, but this, of course, has many more bells and whistles that might be appealing for some. And one last thing to take a look at, and that is game streaming. Right now I am playing Grand Theft Auto V coming to me via the Xbox Cloud Gaming Service, which is part of your Game Pass Ultimate subscription. 
and it's running nicely here. We've got the Wi-Fi 6 radio on board the tablet here, and everything is performing as it should. So if you have some games maybe running locally on your PC in the house and you want to play them in a different room, you can certainly do that with Steam and some other applications out there, or you can use a service like this one and be able to stream the game from the cloud and all in a very good game streaming experience, as you can see here. So overall, if you're looking to pick up the kit version of this that includes the tablet, the keyboard, and the pen, I think you're getting a pretty nice value here. You can certainly find less expensive devices like the on tablet that I keep referencing, but once you piece the on tablet together with all of its accessories, you're getting into the neighborhood of what this one costs, and these accessories are much higher quality than what you'll see out of the on tablet and some of the other budget options out there. Additionally, this has a nicer display and better speakers and a few features that are only on this tablet like that desktop mode and the reading mode that are not on some of the lower cost alternatives out there. So all in, not a bad value here. And I think also this tablet will be better supported over the long run. I would like to see an update to its Android operating system at some point. Android 12 is getting a bit old, so we'll see if Lenovo does that. And if there's anything significant, I'll do an update. But overall, I think this is a pretty good value, especially if you buy it in kit form. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.